All right, so we are back, of course, to talk about some Final Fantasy VII Remake. And today we are revisiting an older topic. We are talking about the infamous at this point, Purple Goo Trail from Genova in Remake versus the, of course, Blood Trail from the original FF7. This is actually a topic I wanted to do, I think, like last week or so, but other videos take precedence sometimes, because I put out a tweet about the Crisis Core ending and just kind of my thoughts on, like, the blood that was used in that. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's powerful, it's useful. Square Enix shouldn't be afraid to use blood in the future. And that kind of brought about some people mentioning the Genova Purple Trail when it comes to the remake and how that kind of made the scene not as good as it was in the original. But I wanted to do a video based off that discussion about whether or not we needed it when it comes to the remake. But then I hop on Twitter today and I've seen people like quote tweeting translations from Turquoise Hammer. They're doing translations of like the Ultimanias and stuff like that. And I think some other accounts are as well. But it just so happens that what people were quote tweeting was like Toriyama and Hamaguchi talking about the Genova scene and why they had to change it from the original. So I figured what better time to finally make this video. Now to be perfectly clear, these aren't new translations. They even say that if you scroll up through the thread, about 70% of this are retranslations. Plus Audrey translated parts of this Ultimania like what, like a year or two ago or some shit? It's been a long time. But to be honest, there are aspects of this that I think are different from Audrey's translation, or maybe they translated more than what Audrey did back in the day, because some of it did seem new to me. And why I say that is because they actually specify with these translations that the rating of the game is part of the reason why they changed stuff, the way Genova looked, the lack of the blood trail, but also trying to appease, like, the censorship and stuff in all the different countries that the game was going to release in. And I don't remember talking about that before, when we discussed, like, Audrey's translations. We might have, my dudes. I still don't remember. It's been a long time. Like, she does the translation so long ago. So as usual, we're just going to read shit and talk about it. So Toriyama says, The most difficult part of the rating review is actually Genova. Our sense was that there wouldn't be any problems because she isn't human, but the fact that she's headless and nearly nude became an issue. To get around that, we had to attach a mechanical device to her neck and cover her body with cloth when she's being held by Sephiroth in the Shinra building. Genova is an iconic part of Final Fantasy VII's unique world, so we really didn't want to alter her, but in the end we had to. And while I 100% agree with Toriyama on this, the basic look of Genova, the majority of what she looks like, is pretty humanoid, right? There's obviously some gross appendages and things coming off of her body. But she looks pretty human for the most part, and a titty's a titty. Like, the rating board's not going to care that she's of alien or whatever the hell she is. But some of what we just read is examples of shit that feels new to me, because Toriyama outright confirms that they put the mechanical device on Genova's body in Remake to cover up the fact that, like, her head's missing. I guess that'd be too graphic for a T-rated game. And we actually did a video talking about Genova's missing head like over a year ago. And I remember, I haven't watched the video in a long time, but I remember theorizing that maybe the mechanical device is there to, for a rating thing, for a T-rated thing. And I feel like that would have been a hypothetical guess with that video if we'd have known that that's actually the case. Like, Toriyama Maura confirms that. So I don't know if Audrey didn't translate that part of the Ultimania or if i just never seen her translation of it. But here we have it. We have a confirmation from Toriyama. But it does suck kind of rereading this stuff and knowing that they had to hold back on stuff that they wanted to do with Remake or just retelling the FF7 story because of the rating. Like, if they weren't going specifically for a T rating and trying to appease the boards with that rating and try to appease all the different countries they're going to release the game into, they could have went a little more hard with the FF7 stuff, right? There could have been a little more, you know, blood potentially. There might not have been a gooey purple trail if they were going for an M rated FF7 remake. Hamaguchi and Toriyama also go on to say, Depictions relating to human experimentation also get targeted during the rating review, so we had to make some minor adjustments there as well. However, if we went so far as to change the premise that Shinra uses human experimentation to create soldiers, the game would cease to be Final Fantasy VII. So we're firm about never changing that component of the story. So that to me also seemed like a bit of new information. I don't recall reading that before as well. That like Essentially, the rating boards wouldn't want them to put emphasis on the fact that Shinra experiments on humans, but... But that's a big part of the Final Fantasy VII story, obviously, so they literally could not change that. That had to be a part of it. So it's good that the devs were firm in wanting to keep that in the game, but they kind of had to anyways. Like, there, there could not be a Final Fantasy VII remake without there being some sort of emphasis on human experimentation. That's just a part of the journey, part of the story. In the original game, Genova leaves a bloody red trail as she makes her way through the Shinra building, and I was really hoping to reproduce that in the remake. Unfortunately, Deep Red Blood isn't allowed by the rating criteria for the age demographic we plan to target. Therefore, we changed it to a bubbling purple lava-like substance. The idea was to introduce a sort of supernatural look while maintaining a sinister feel. That part was tough. It took five or six reviews before we could finally agree on something that towed the line just right. A lot of work went into analyzing how we could depict elements of the original version in a modern way, all the while being mindful of the game's rating. So there we have the devs mentioning yet again that the rating was a big factor into how the remake was made. And again, I don't. this seems new to me, dude. Like, I don't recall talking about this before where the devs are so open about the rating impacting remake but it's not really news or surprise because that's what we all kind of expected anyways 
But the reason there's not a bloody trail for Genova is because they went for a T rating. That's just a fact of it. They just that's them admitting that. Now that being said, we do see them already taking baby steps with the first piece of DLC, the remake. I forgot, right? Episode intermission. There was a is T rated, but there's still a blood warning in it, and you do get some okay amount of blood, right? With Sonon getting killed and the blood splatter on on Yuffie's face. And in a lot of ways, that's a graphic scene compared, especially compared to remake. Remake part one, there wasn't anything really like that. There's death scenes and stuff like that, but you don't see Jesse or Biggs bleeding or anything, despite them laying on the floor dying. So it kind of makes me wonder, based off of what we just read and also the reception the remake got, if they didn't kind of use episode intermission as sort of a testing ground, so to speak, to see what they could get away with, right? Because it's still a T-rated game, or T-rated DLC, that has a blood warning and they use a little bit of blood. I wonder if they're not testing the waters there just to see how much blood they can use with that rating for a game. The thing is, beyond the Shinra Building Massacre, there's only two other moments that I can think of that have blood in the original Final Fantasy VII. There's the Midgar Zalem, which... Is a really iconic scene in a lot of ways, but it's not necessary now because the point was you fight the Midgar Zalem, it more than likely kicks your ass, you gotta run from it, flee from it, get a chocobo, whatever, and then you see that Sephiroth just absolutely decimated this thing, but that's not that big of a deal anymore because we fight him at the end of Remake and he's throwing goddamn buildings at us. We know how strong he is. The other moment is, of course, the bloody Sephiroth face at the end of the game. This is something they could easily recreate with Remake if they want to do that at some point, and maybe they would tone the blood down a little bit because it is a lot of blood. It's not, I, I'm fine with it. But I'm sure the ratings board would disagree, but they could still do this with just less blood. The point of bringing up those other examples is that going forward with the Final Fantasy VII story, there's not a lot of blood that is needed, so if they want to use it, they don't have to use a whole lot, unless they want to do some new stuff. There's obviously plenty of room for them to add new shit, new deaths, or whatever. They can use blood in other ways if they want to, and if they want to go for a higher rating at some point, you know, we're not going to complain. If they, they just out of nowhere decide, you know what, Part 2 is going to be M-rated, I'm not going to complain. Now, the odds of that happening are almost 100% that it's not going to happen, but there's always the possibility that the blood they did in Episode Intermission, the blood and gore rating for Stranger Paradise, the possible M slash blood and gore rating for, for Final Fantasy XVI, is them testing the waters for the franchise going forward. Now, going back to something I said in the video earlier that I wanted to talk about, is when it comes to remake with the Genova gooey purple trail, was a bloody trail necessary? And to be honest, it's really not. If you compare the scenes, they're just drastically different. Thing is, when it comes to remake and you get to like the later parts of chapter 16 and you're following Hojo, and you get to like his labs and shit, there's not people around, right? There's not a bunch of people for, even if Genova were to break out, to leave a bloody trail. Whereas if you look at the original FF7, there's Shinra employees everywhere. There's guards and there's regular Shinra employees, so it makes sense whenever Genova breaks out of her cell that she'd be killing everybody. And also, as you follow the bloody trail throughout the Shinra building, there's just dead employees along the way, whereas if you look at Remake, she's secluded by herself within Hojo's labs, right? So it would make sense if when we come back here later on, and she's broken out of the cell, that there'd be a blood trail, because whose blood would it be? It just, it doesn't make any logical sense, based on where they put her within Remake. Now, part of that's probably intentional, because if there were employees around here, then it wouldn't be logical that she didn't break out and kill all of them. But also, if we're comparing to the original Final Fantasy VII, I think Remake makes a lot more sense that Genova is secured within Hojo's labs, down below the Shinder building, away from a bunch of people, right? Because she's very, very important. In the original FF7, she's in like a little chamber, almost in like a storage room. Like, they just didn't give a shit about her. It just didn't make sense. And while I've definitely had opinions on this in the past, and it's not like I'm excited that there wasn't a blood trail, I would prefer that over this. I think it makes a lot of sense with the remake and how they handled the Genova stuff. I wish there was a blood trail. I wish there was a massacre throughout the Shinder building, but it is what it is. But my dudes, I do of course want to pass off to you guys. When it comes to the discussion of like bloody content when it comes to the remake project, what are your thoughts going forward? What do you think they're going to do? I do think the episode of intermission is a tease of things to come. Now, how much blood are they going to use in the future? I don't know. When are they going to actually use blood? What scenes are going to require that? I don't know. We could kind of theorize based off some stuff in the original F7, which we're not going to talk about here. You know what it is. You know the scene. Maybe that's a scene that gets replicated. Maybe there's blood there. I don't know. And again, while I've had opinions on the Genova purple poop trail, whatever the fuck that shit is, it's game's almost two years old. I've come to accept it. It's not the biggest deal anymore. Back then, I was definitely upset. At one point, I was also upset that they cut a lot of the Honey Bee In stuff, but I, I get it. It makes sense. The climate's different these days. It's been 25 years. You just you can't really do that stuff in the same way that it was done in the original FF7. There's ways you could do it to where it's not necessarily as offensive, but it makes sense, right? Other than my dudes, that's going to be the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't going to say more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter, DashDayYT. I'm a Discord. Links to social networks are in the description. And in the outro. Later, guys. Used to care what people thought. But now I care more. And nobody out here has got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Rogaine, or leave it. Like Cobain.